Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Rona and I are here having a good time today because we've gotten a little bit of rain. I'm not saying the drought's broken, but we have gotten a little rain. And I've gotten a lot of requests to tell about how my rainwater collection system works. And it's a big deal. I've been putting this video off because trying to do a good job with it's going to be challenging. And I'll do my best. So it starts with these pipes that run all the way up to the gutter. The gutter goes all the way around the house. It has cheap gutter screen in the, in the gutter. It keeps the biggest stuff out. Inside these collection boxes are another screen. They get clogged up and I have to clean them out every once in a while. I did that yesterday because once the gutters start to overflow a little bit, when you're getting a big rain, you know you need to get those cleaned out. These are four inch PVC pipes and there's two on the other side. They run underneath the slab and they join with these two and a fifth one around the side. And they join up in a six inch PVC main trunk line. And that six inch main trunk line comes out here, joins with this fifth pipe, runs down and turns below this ledge. And long before any of this was here, this piping got put in the ground and it has a T and it continues to fall until it gets to this T and then it runs up to the place where it ties into the tank. I'll show you that in a second. But first I want to show you that at the low point, there's a T and there's a drain line. And this drain line is a four inch ball valve. It allows me to open, can you hear that? So it allows me to open this piping system, this entire piping system, and drain it out. And that's important because those pipes get sunshine down in them. And it, after a week or so in the sunshine with no rain, those, the water in those pipes start to smell like an old pond. And look at Rona, <laughs> just having a good time by herself. Let me show you where it goes into the tank. You want to drain that out so that you don't get that stinky water into the rainwater tank as the first thing that it sees. We've got good filtration, but there's no reason to fight that. This tank is all concrete. What we did when we built this tank was we came in and we cut down to solid rock. This is eight foot six inches tall, but that's only about four foot six inches there. We're about four feet down into the ground. But then, okay, so, I, so the first thing I did was I shot a shotcrete swimming pool, basically. Nine inch thick walls, a six inch thick floor. And that's easy to form. You don't have to have two-sided forms that are very expensive. You can put one-sided forms and just shoot that shotcrete up against it. It's like 7,000 PSI concrete. It's very strong. It's got a, because it's only nine inches, we're able to do it with a single mat of uh, rebar. And we let that mat of rebar come up out of the slab, a uh, couple of, two and a half feet. And then, Inside the tank, and I'll show you that in just a second, but inside the tank, right here and right there, are some sauna tubes. I believe we used 10 inch sauna tubes, it might have been 12. Good girl, Rona. Come here, come here. Go get that ball. So that helps support this lid. This lid is six and a half to six inches thick. And when we formed it up, there's our water. It's been in a drought for quite some time and we still have enough water to keep us for probably two or three more months if it didn't rain. But let me tell you, I also have a well. I believe that you need redundant systems for everything. I use the rainwater for all my domestic water. We, we drink it, we shower in it, 
It makes your hair soft and your dishes spotless and you can wash your car. There's no water spots. That well is full of mineral. So, the water comes in. I'm jumping around, I know, but I'll cover everything. Um, the water comes in with this six inch pipe into this filtration system. And this filtration system is going to be filthy, I'm sure. So you see the granular uh, stuff off the roof. Some of that, a lot of that gets caught in that T. Does, it doesn't rush past the T. Come here, frog. Oh, that's a dead frog. Okay, Rona will find that one later. So the biggest water comes through here and goes through this mat. If it fills up this and this gets dirty, it comes over here. There is a drain right here that there's a hole right here and I can open the cap off of that pipe right there and it will drain that gravel out. I can rinse this tank out. The water that goes through that first screen then goes through these screens. And these are, this used to be easier before I built the solar ship. These are four inch PVC pipes and I cast a, a uh, coupling into the concrete when I poured it. And I cast this too. And these pipes are four inch PVC and they have a bunch of inch and a quarter holes drilled in them. And then I wrap this polyester batting around it. And you can see that it catches all that dirt off the roof. So that when you look in the water tank, all of that that's in those filters didn't end up in the tank. So the water in the tank is pretty clean. I, uh, if it was a nice sunny day, or if I had remembered to bring a nice bright flashlight, I could show you. There is very little sediment on the bottom of this tank. This filter does a great job. I need to clean those filters now, but you can see how, how hard a work they do. Okay, next thing you gotta do when you're doing a tank like this, you don't, in Texas, you don't want this tank just sitting out in the sun all day, getting to 130 degrees. You'll have uh, really warm baths. You won't have to use a water heater to do your dishes. So what I've done is I built dirt up around, all the way around, except on this side. On the north side, it's only up against it for the first four feet. On the south and west side, where it gets more sunshine, it has dirt almost to the top. Down a foot and a half here, maybe two and a half feet over here. And then, and I built this in 2003. Would I do it different if I was doing it again? Absolutely not. This was so inexpensive. Concrete costs more now, but at the time, I built this for $8,000. And if I had built fiberglass tanks, or if I had bought fiberglass tanks, I'd have needed to put a foundation in for those, and they would have cost about $20,000 for fiberglass tanks. You can get polypropylene tanks cheaper, they're not great and they're black and this gives you a patio <laughs> in this case what it gave me later i built the solar array on top of this tank and what that does is it keeps the sun off the top of the tank too so now the tank stays cooler than it used to let's come on around After the water collects in the tank, it comes up, over, and down, and into this pump house. I'm embarrassed by how dirty the pump house is, but this pump house has been functioning for 20 years, and it's all insulated. It, it, I, this is, all has uh, two-inch polyisocyanurate foam insulation. And I have a couple of vents to help keep it cool. And then in the winter time, these plugs go in and close those vents off. And so I don't have any issues with it freezing. 
And even in that deep freeze that we had, it got down that last night when my neighbor came over and helped us out with a generator because it was getting down to 15 degrees and we didn't have any power for five days. Even that last night, it hadn't had any water circulating through it and it hadn't frozen. And he got that generator on and we got some water pumped through and we didn't end up losing any water lines in, these, in this pump house. So, from there, it goes underground. So, let's go see. Yeah, I kind of like, I had some old stone and I got tired of climbing a ladder to get up there. And so one day my Mason friend came with his helper and they spent a Saturday and built these beautiful stairs. So happy with it. All right, now I'm gonna take the camera and we're gonna go look at the filter system. This is, uh, I'm sorry I've taken so long to do this video and I know it won't be as popular as the battery videos. So let's just say it is a battery video. Hey, look, batteries. All right, I wanna show you the filtration system inside the house. So there are quite a few things to let you know about in here. The water, I have two water sources that come in. I have the well and I have the rainwater. Rain comes from above, well comes from below, that's how I remember. Now if you look, we're on the well right now. I don't use the well inside the house, but I'm showing you something. I'm, giving, I'm gonna give you a demonstration of something during this video. This, this filtration system brings the water in. There's a bypass I can use here. It brings the water in and I have a pressure valve. It goes through a four by 20 inch filter. This is a five micron filter and a four by 20 inch granular, granular activated carbon filter with a 20 micron uh, post filter in it. And you wanna make sure when you first uh, change the filters, and I change these filters today, when you wanna make sure when you first change the filter that you flush that, the fine uh, carbon particles out of it. It then goes up. This is a T with a little valve. So when I put a new uh, carbon filter on, I open this valve and this is the valve I flush that carbon filter out of and straight down into the drain. Uh, underneath this I have a welded a soldered metal pan and it's tied in to a drain that is tied in to my septic system. So all the water that gets used, that gets uh, cleaned during the process of changing filters, all of it goes into wastewater. Then the water comes up and it goes into a solenoid valve that can clamp down the water if we're not getting good uh, penetration of our ultraviolet. Now, how much penetration you need is debatable, but what I have, it, the, okay, so the next thing that happens is the water comes into the ultraviolet light. It is important that the ultraviolet light not come in contact with PVC. So that's why we have this flexible stainless steel uh, fitting at both ends. And even the next piece is a, is a uh, Schedule 80 fitting before I get to any of that Schedule 40 PVC. Uh, that way we don't get ultraviolet light degrading the uh, PVC. So the water flows through this ultraviolet fil this ultraviolet light, it's a purifier, before it goes down and into the house. And so you see these all the time and when you do, usually what you see is this little thing right here. And this little thing right here says, oh look, there's a glowy thing in there. You've got uh, You've got an ultraviolet light burning, but does it tell you anything beyond that? No. 
It'll glow, that ultraviolet light will last for years and years. It'll have degraded over that time. They say to replace that bulb every 20 hours. How do they know? They don't. They're just cutting you short because they don't want to take any chances. And so they just tell you 20 hours. But if you have a monitor like this, you can tell how the, how the ultraviolet light is performing. One thing that, that creates havoc with these ultraviolet lights and being able to penetrate the water is when you have color in the water. Now, the water that comes off this roof has a tiny bit of color. You can't see it. The water in your glass looks crystal clear, but there's just enough color to refract the ultraviolet light. This well water is reading a seven on this scale. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go turn on a faucet and we're gonna change the water over. We're gonna change the water over from the well to the rainwater. And what's going to happen when that rainwater comes around, it'll take a little while to get around there, but what's going to happen is it's going to drop this meter down. So there it's a while that's happening, I'm going to talk to you about the process here. It's starting to fall, starting to go. And that is because there is color in the water that's blocking the ultraviolet from functioning correctly, and it might get down all the way down to one. All right. Okay, it went down to two, and it's sliding just a little bit beyond that. Okay, when you change these filters, you want to make sure that you keep a good record, and this record goes all the way back to 2003. I'm going to go turn my water off now. and it went down to one. You're still getting penetration. It has, it's in the red, but you're still getting penetration and it has not cut off the solenoid where you've heard the click and it would have cut off the flow of water through this system. Because if the bulb dies, you don't want to pump untreated, unpurified water through your system. You want it to stop right then and you wouldn't know unless you have this meter. This meter costs as much as this ultraviolet light does, and almost no one puts them on. I think they should be required uh, in any system that's like this, but they are not. All right, so this record keeping goes all the way back to 2003, and you can see how many times I've changed the lamp, and, and here a lamp burned out, and I only got nine months out of it. The next one I got almost two years. The next one I got almost three years. And this one I got almost four years of life from. And this is what tells me. You can get that many years of life out of a lamp, but they don't dare tell you that because you might not get that. It might not be effective anymore. It ranges, as you can tell by this record keeping, it ranges in length of, of service. This one went almost four years. I took this one out, cleaned the, there's a glass tube inside here that the, that the bulb is inside of that keeps the bulb dry while the water flows past it. And I took that tube out today and I cleaned it and I got, the bulb is working well again. I will probably let it stay in service. It's been in service for 21 months now. It'll probably stay in service for another year. Um, and I need to get a new list because I'm running out of space here. But one other thing I want to show you by this record keeping is these filters used to last seven months, six months, 
three months, three months, because these filters used to be four by 10 filters. And some people build these systems with two and a half by 10 inch filters. They don't last long at all. When you get a four by 10 filter, here's my notes from back then. The pressure drop is 25 pounds with new filters and 40 pounds plus with old filters. Well, that's not the case anymore. Let's turn the water back on and I'll show you how this 4x20 performs so much better. So I'm going to turn on the bathtub and the sink and let's look at the pressure drop. We've got 59 pounds here and we've got 55 pounds here. We've got four pounds of pressure drop y'all and with the smaller filters I was getting 25 pounds of drop with new filters. It's silly. Now my filters go two years Uh, seven months. Um, that is 20 months. That is 22 months. That is, yo, I get two, sometimes three years out of filters now simply because I got the bigger one and because there's so little pressure drop with these bigger filters, when they start to get old, you don't end up going in and not having water for your shower. It's really important that when you build these systems, go ahead, ante up. Now you see these filters are at an angle. That's because when I originally put these in, they hung straight down. It looked really nice. But when I put the 20 inch, my piping was in the way. So I had to swing these out. It's a little more difficult to change the filters now than it was. I had to swing these out to get them to clear. All works. I have disconnects everywhere so I can take all this stuff apart, which was important when I changed these filter housings. And please subscribe to my channel. Please push like. Please share it with your friends. If you're in an off-grid situation, you need this. Please share it with your friends. All right. I think that that's it. The, filter, the filtration clean, cleaning process would be a whole video on its own. It takes me about 45 minutes to do it. And uh, that's including taking this apart taking this off and cleaning this uh, sensor uh, lens, cleaning the tube. Uh, I put the bulb back in. When I put this in, make sure you don't mess up, y'all. When I put this in, I put it all the way over here, jammed up against this side, because when I pull this tube out, the light out, it just touches when it comes out. Just barely works. Everything in my life seems to just barely work. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting our channel with your viewership. I appreciate it. We're doing pretty good. I sure would like to get on up to that 10,000 subscribers. Share it with your friends. Y'all take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.